to the Redline Productions proudly presents Today's To The Redline review was made possible in part by... Well, hey everybody. Well, thanks for joining me today. I'd like to go over this uh, 2002 Ford Thunderbird. Now, this uh, car actually is a pretty rare car in the used car market. And this example is a 02, so it's a first model year uh, of this generation. This is uh, known as the 11th generation of the Ford Th Thunderbird, which, I mean, the T-Bird, for those of you who know it, um, dates all the way back to 1955. That's when the original one came out. It was designed to completely, you know, destroy the Corvette when it came out. And it was designed not as a sports car, as a, kind of like a luxury cruiser, and that's exactly how this one drives. But anyways, 02, 11th, 11th generation, first model year of this car. White is the exterior color, obviously, and this particular example only has 43,000 miles. Literally, this car uh, was really well kept and barely driven. Um, and the styling of the car is very retro modern. It definitely looks like a very classic, you know, like an old car, obviously. I mean, it is old. It's an 02. It's a 10-year-old car, but the design still looks pretty interesting. Uh, you still get a lot of stares in it when you're driving down the road, especially just because of that retro look. Um, and But the car itself is very modern underneath. It's, it's actually based on the Lincoln LS platform along with the Jaguar S-Type. A pretty good place to start. The LS was a really great car for Lincoln. And a lot of people actually miss the car dearly. Uh, the engine in the vehicle is a 3.9 liter V8 that actually comes from Jaguar. It's part of their AJ engine family. Uh, and it's a pretty peppy powertrain despite the fact that this uh, convertible weighs 3,700 pounds. But don't uh, be fooled by it the way it looks. This car is a luxury cruiser. It's designed to be a boulevard cruiser. It's not a sports car, and it definitely doesn't drive like one. But um, it's a very unique car. I mean, driving this car around, you will not find anything else like it. And people do give you stares, despite the fact that this car is uh, 10 years old already. Coming to your interior, this one does have the contrasting red and black uh, leather interior with the rest of the interior. It looks pretty interesting actually. I actually like it. It brightens up the cabin. You can see this one also has the power, or I'm sorry, it just has the hard top. It's a removable hard top that's a bit heavy. I'm not going to actually take the top off because it requires two people to remove. Underneath is a power soft top underneath, though, for those of you who are wondering. Coming into the interior, here is just your standard Ford key. Um, nothing too special with remote keyless entry. The interior in here just resembles the LS completely. You can see only 43,000 miles on this bad boy. It's a really clean car. Starts right up, and I love the way that engine sounds. 3.9 V8's always been a great engine. Um, anyways, as far as the interior goes, if you guys have ever had a Lincoln LS, the interior in this car looks exactly the same, aside, aside from different trim pieces. The window is only automatic down for the driver's side, and you can see these are the old school Ford switches and gear and whatnot. Um, the dashboard, literally, right off the LS. Uh, you do have these real aluminum trim pieces here that Ford actually spent the money to put in this car. I mean, if, if I remember correctly, the or the Ford Thunderbird, the 02, this, this car went all the way up to 05, was actually Motor Trend's 02 car of the year. Um, back in the day, fairly, really nice interior. I mean, the, the aluminum trim looks really nice. It, it does have a couple of dents in it, but I mean, that's how you know it's real trim, but it, it looks fantastic. Uh, the rest of the dashboard is soft touch. You can see this is an older design from the airbag cover, but um, the steering wheel is essentially right off the LS with these red painted plastic pieces that are on the shifter and parts of the steering wheel. Uh, the door panel is soft touch plastic, uh, chrome door, chrome plated door handle with a leather stitch here for the armrest. Down here is all hard plastic, however, it's a little bit sharp, but um, I mean, the rest of the interior of this car is pretty nice, actually. In terms of technology, it's got your dual zone automatic climate control. That's your standard. This is like pretty old school Ford, you know, radio system in this car. And even like the old, like the way, um, the way it displays volume. So this is pretty old school stuff here. The glove box is nicely lined and felt, but it's not, uh, it's not um, supported with a strut or it's not damped. Um, the center console here is a little bit creaky, but that's kind of common in these older Fords. Um, and you do have a tiny little storage compartment right there, but don't expect to find like a USB or iPod input in here. This car doesn't have it. This Remember, this came out in 02. The one thing about the T-Birds is um, they had no back seat. The original T-Bird did not have a back seat, but Ford actually added one in the next couple of years. Um, Ford actually didn't add it in this one. Uh, they expected sales to be about 25000 a year when this car first came out. And uh, it only, at its best, did about 19000 and then sales kind of dropped from then. I think if they had added 
the uh, back row or the, the second row seats, uh, they probably could have widened the car's appeal a little bit more. But nevertheless, it's a pretty classic car and a rare car in the used car market today. Anyways, this car does have a pretty long rear end and it's kind of hard to judge when you're driving the car when you're not used to it. But uh, here's the trunk. It's pretty small actually um, and somebody actually left a little bit of things in here so we'll have to make sure that gets back to the original owner. But um, pretty small capacity trunk. Your floor mats are all in here and whatnot. But you do still have a trunk and the top does not interfere with the trunk so that is nice. Here is the 3.9 liter V8 engine that essentially comes from Jaguar, part of their AJ engine family. Uh, in the O2 model, it made 252 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque. O3 is when they actually upped the output by adding variable valve timing to 280 horsepower and 286 foot pounds of torque. But nonetheless, it's a smooth, refined V8, uh, really well praised uh, when this engine was out for its relatively nice power delivery and its smoothness. Um, it definitely moves the car out pretty well. It's linked to a five-speed automatic transmission, so and that's your only transmission choice. No manual was ever offered for this car. All right, so for those of you who are looking for uh, one of these rare T-Birds, let's take a look at how this car actually drives, shall we? So five-speed automatic. Uh, I, forgot to, I forgot to mention that in 04, or 03, uh, when they updated the powertrain, they actually gave it a um, five-speed automatic with the select shift, which this one doesn't have the select shift. But nevertheless, the car has a really long front end and a really long back end, so you kind of have to get used to that. Um, and when the top's up, the visibility is pretty um, bad in the back. But nonetheless, um, these kind of cars, they're, they're not designed to be, you know, everyday drivers. They're toys. And people who are car enthusiasts, they appreciate that, you know. A really nice, like, unique car is not perfect. Five-speed automatic definitely is geared very uh, widely. It's an interesting transmission. But nonetheless, this car is not a horsepower or speed freak or speed demon, but it does get out of its own way decently well. The steering is pretty light and numb, so it's not gonna inspire confidence, you know, to attack the twisty roads. It wasn't designed to do that. But, I mean, taking it out on the highway, the seats are very comfortable. The ride is very nice. And you know, when you do own this car, you will get used to the, how it drives and the, the visibility in here and whatnot. But I mean, I mean, driving this car around, people stare at you like crazy. I mean, it's, I would stare at this car. It's a very uh, unique looking, uniquely styled car that you just don't see very often. But I mean, it accelerates pretty well. The engine sound makes a nice sound. I mean, I miss the way, I love the way those LSs used to drive. The uh, And I really think Lincoln needs to bring something or bring a rear wheel drive car back. I mean, this car was a good choice, but it was based on the LS platform. But anyways, guys, if you are in the market for one of these rare T-Birds uh, and you happen to find one just like this, uh, I best I'd suggest you snatch it up pretty quick because, um, you know, back in the day when these cars were new, they were charging above sticker for them and they still are pretty uh, rare in the used car market today. But anyways, guys, hope you've enjoyed my quick overview of this vehicle. Uh, thanks for watching, have a great day. Yeah, here's some legal stuff for you. The views and opinions expressed in the following video may not necessarily reflect those of the title holding automotive dealer or the entity they represent. All videos are filmed with permission by a professional driver on a set course with the collaboration and assistance of local law enforcement authorities. Do not attempt. Logos and brandings of vehicle manufacturers, dealerships, and online social media sites are the sole property of their respective representation used with permission. The To The Redline logo, soundtrack, and web resources, as well as all of their associated media are copyrighted intellectual property of To The Redline LLC. All rights reserved.